Hey, what's up, everybody? Good morning. It's 11 o'clock uh, Pacific time. My wife is about to start a workout. I'm in the... not right this second, but shortly. <laughs> My wife is about to start a workout in the background, and I'm about to go live with uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, I hope everybody is doing good. Uh, in the state of California, eh, it's not the best, but I actually just learned about some things that are happening in Canada, uh, talking to my mom that I think are interesting, but let me just uh, bring in my person today. Mm -hmm. She has to request me when she does, it'll be fantastic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One second, I don't know how, I don't know why this always takes so long, but you know what, whatever. I'm, I'm not gonna complain about the uh, internet infrastructure at this point in time. I'll just wait for the next thing to come up and I'll try again. All right, here we go. Still can't get her, but it'll come back, I promise. All right, so I just had a nice chat with my mom. That was exciting. Oh, you tried, try again. I'll wait for you. There you go. I'm excited to talk to this person, I didn't see. Hello. Hey. Hi, how are you? Oh. Your lighting is way better than mine. How do you get lighting like that, Pat? It's a window. It's a window. You know, I, I have a lot of construction going on in my communal patio space, so I'm thinking that maybe it's shining off of the chain link fence. Back in my right up. Well, you look lovely. Oh, thank you. I, As do you. I changed my uh, sweatshirt and T-shirt today. Same headband, though. I like um, band. It's a it's a nice touch. Thank you. Um, I feel like my cases of knocking point one in my I, house. <laughs> I, I do. Why haven't you opened them? I have opened them. I have a whole case of them. What am I gonna do with okay. sixty right. bottles of wine in a quarantine? <laughs> <laughs> I have one idea of what you can well, do. Well, okay, I've certainly done that. Um, but I will say that a box of wine is a great weight for squatting. Um, hey, I haven't seen you since the last day of filming on the show. True. How are you? I'm what good. You How are you? What? I'm, I'm okay. Are you, how are you doing in all of this craziness? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Um, my family and I are out in the desert. Things oh, are nice. decent. Yeah. Without being too specific, where where are you? Are you in LA? I'm in LA. Yeah? Yeah. How's that? It's interesting, um, given that I'm, you know, just me, myself, and I here, which is funny. Um, well, I do have Bob, my quarantine boyfriend. Do you want to meet? I guess you should meet my boyfriend. I would love to. This is my boyfriend, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um... He looks like a really thoughtful, kind, and gentle lover. He's a strong and silent type, but he's a, he's a great listener. He's not very yeah. handy, though. So, I thought you guys assembled a treadmill yesterday. Yeah, he was mostly moral support. I did most of the work. But Isn't that one of the things that you can do in L.A. right now, though? Can't you go up for a run? You can. Well, at least up until yesterday. Like, I don't know yeah. all of the rules now of the, you know, stay in your house lockdown. But yeah. uh, actually, that's something that people should read. Um, I'll pop a link uh, to this afterwards on my Twitter account. But yeah. if you're living in LA, it's actually really important it, to know what's actually closed down and not closed down. Right. Because I think people think it's a little bit more crazy than what it is. You should be right. very thoughtful about it, but it's not as mm -hmm. crazy. 
Well, I mean, it's not, you know, stakes are not dire at this point, but it is important to be thoughtful, as you said, and be safe, mm -hmm. you know. Only do what you, um, know. you and I talk so much during, uh, during the last season about just stuff on the show. I never really talked to you that much about like family stuff. How's your family? Do you, are they good? Are they safe? Is everything going well? They're good. My mom and my grandparents are in Kansas City and they yep. are hunkered down in the house, hanging out with the cats, just, you know, <laughs> living out the quarantine, watching movies. Yeah. Like all of us are. What are you watching? I just, you already watched Arrow from the beginning of, you know, 170 oh, episodes and all. for it, sure. It goes without yeah. saying. Um, definitely. I actually did that before I started on the show. I know. I know. Um, what have I been watching? I just watched Little Fires Everywhere because they released the first three episodes of it. I know. I watched all three episodes last night. Oh, so good. It's really, really it's good. Really good. I'm hooked. Who's your favorite? <clears throat> Who's your favorite character? Uh, let's say, let's say it on the count of three. All right, because I I know mine. Except I'm terrible with character names, so I'm. It's just gonna sound weird. Okay, I was gonna say I'm bad with character names too. So why are we playing this game? Because you know you you're gonna be able to say it in some way, shape, or form. Okay, I see. I see. All right, ready? Mm. On the count of three. One, two. Three. Carrie Washington's Moody? daughter. I didn't oh, I like I like her daughter too. Is it Pearl? Pearl, yes. Good job. She's fantastic. She's great. What well, did I don't you even say? Know what she's done before? I said Moody, but I just I think was she's about to say Moody. I should. Uh, I should have said Moody. We he's like both. Really, of them. he's really good though, isn't he? Yeah. They're all fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. What else are you watching? But, um, I started watching Mindhunter again because I it's sort of research, but also just fun stuff. Um, what else are you doing to stay busy? Uh, you, to stay by the way, busy? you and I have never really like we've only ever talked shop. We've never really talked like this. It's true. I know. What have I been doing? I've been working out a lot. I just, I kind of got on Amazon and rated anything I could as far as what can I do to make a creative gym. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I got one of those, you know, slidey kind of hockey things that you can skate in your house. I have a bob and I have a TRX and a spin bike and the treadmill and so I'm doing a lot of that, reorganizing my house. All they spend all the things that I always used as an excuse is I never have time for. I'm doing them now. How about you? <laughs> uh, on Sunday, I went to uh, Dick's Sporting Goods in Palm Desert, and uh, my wife thought I was being crazy. Except you can see our home gym back there. Oh, I love it. And those resistance cables. Yeah. Um, I bought the ones that are a hundred pounds each. I didn't know they existed, but oh I but God. I but I purchased them. <laughs> you building a swing set for Mavi with those? <laughs> no, we've got a pool here. She's good. Just, oh, I, I just fair. I just whip her in the pool. That counts as a swing. Um, what? Um, just because so many people that are going to be watching this are going to be uh, fans of uh, fans of our show. What were some of your favorite parts? about working on Arrow, or just in general, your favorite parts about just being on a set, acting, interacting with people, because that's the thing that I'm not, I wouldn't say struggling with, but just, it's gonna take a minute for us to be able to put, how many people work on a film set every day? 300? It's gonna take a minute for us to put that back together. What are some of your favorite things about working on a film set? I think my favorite thing, and this is something we had on Shadowhunters, and I was so thrilled to come onto the show like Arrow because you guys had that too, is the family. And yep. it's you have all the departments that are working together and having synergy and kind of bouncing off of each other. Mm -hmm. And when you have people that are creatively passionate about what they do, it inspires the people around them. 
And then yeah. so you sort of get this whole that's greater than the sum of the parts as mm -hmm. it all kind of happens and builds. And I'm sure that's going to happen with your new show too, but I mean, it's just it's yeah. special. Um, over the course of Shadow Hunters, did the crew stay pretty? Um, uh, oh my God, I'm I'm dying for the word. D d consistent? consistent, like not a lot of turnover. <laughs> yeah, we had largely yeah. the same crew, a lot of the same cast, but it was it was exactly almost how it was on Arrow, how you had the same core group yeah. of people for the entirety of the series, mm -hmm. and it just it made it so special. Um. What was your favorite part about shooting the backdoor pilot? Because I haven't really talked with you that much about that. Because I, when I came back, I came back very briefly for the last episode. And you guys had been so busy shooting <laughs> the backdoor pilot. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, a little bit caught up. I wouldn't say caught up with myself necessarily, but just in general, like dealing with the fact that this was the end and I didn't necessarily pay a ton of uh, attention to the fact that you guys had just shot something. How was that experience? Yeah, no, but honestly, just to speak to that, that's entirely understandable. Cause it's, it's the end, oh, I... it's such a huge part of your life. Yeah. And it, it, having just gone through that on, you know, on Shadowhunters before, I remember there was a moment where I was, we just wrapped and we were about to do, a, we had a wrap party right after shooting in our soundstage. Mm -hmm. And I was walking off set for the last time in wardrobe and I stopped at the edge of our set. And I, it was like, there was a wall there and I couldn't take another step. And I went, oh my God, this is the last time mm -hmm. I'm crossing the threshold in character. And it's, it's a weird thing when, it, when a character is so a part of you. And not only that, but you've become such a part of building the show around the character and the story and everything. It's huge. It's, it's a weird mental process to go through. So I totally yeah. understand. Um, but the backdoor pilot was, it was really interesting because there was the whole memory loss thing and the character departure. It, I think my favorite part as, as an actor was kind of building the two characters into one. Because mm -hmm. there's basically, there was Mia 1, Mia 2, and then Mia 3 that was the combination of the first two. <laughs> and so kind of navigating that and finding that. Also getting to work with Charlie a lot more was yeah. so awesome. And Ben and just kind of building that, all those family relationships and seeing how they changed and doing all it, It's just I love, getting to, yeah. I love me some Ben. Oh my God. How much do you love Ben Lewis? I love Ben so much. He's the best. He was so great. Um... Oh, yeah. Ben. What a guy. Um, <laughs> Mark Bunting. Yes. Our first, our first assistant director. I'm just getting over. Um, <laughs> I'm just I'm just getting over the show being done. And I'm starting to decompress. I'm in LA. And he sends me a text. And it just says, well, and then it's followed by a photo that is clearly a blank soundstage. And I was about to text him. I'm like, oh no, you just sent me a photo of the bunker. That's a blank soundstage now, didn't you? <laughs> I didn't text him back for like three days, that asshole. Oh man. Oh no! It's okay. I'm 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 over it. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine with not working and not knowing when I'm going to go back to work. It's it's fine. I'm good. Oh, listen, in actuality, I hear you. in actuality, I am good. Are you okay? Because <laughs> you are one of the most uh, entrepreneurial, forward-thinking, go-getters, always busy people that I know. Mm -hmm. are, how are you dealing with stuff like this? I am channeling that energy into other things. Cause I was supposed to be on a film in South Africa in like two weeks. Sounds, like, sounds, about, par, sounds about part of the course. Which obviously is not happening now. No. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I'm doing research for that because I actually have time now and I'm, I'm developing a couple projects that I mm -hmm. actually have time to focus on that now and go back to the source material and, 
kind of seeing what else I can do creatively to find something. What are you, what are you doing to keep that energy occupied? Uh, one of my friends is out in the desert with me and she and I have been uh, talking a lot about a, um, a book we want to option uh, that we're going to try to create a TV show for or a limited series or a movie. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not an alarmist, but I'm, I'm playing the long game on this one. And right now, I'm not trying to rush to the idea that things are going to go back to normal in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever. So uh, right now I'm where it sounds like you're a person that initiates things. <laughs> I'm a person that needs a start date. Yeah. Like when I was training for heels, uh, we were eventually supposed to start around March 15th. And I couldn't really kick my workouts into high gear until I knew what our actual start date was. And then I really go for it. Right. So right now, uh, right now I'm chilling. I'm swimming a lot. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm running a lot. I've got my home gym that I haven't used yet. Don't tell anyone that's involved with heels. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I won't tell anyone, but the, the 9,300 people that are watching might say something. This video only lasts 24 hours and then it's gone. Oh, you're right. You're right. Unless I find out a way to save it at the end, but you know, who's to say, really? I don't know. I'm but, too much of a um, You know, honestly, uh, our kiddo's doing homeschool. She's got dance every day at two o'clock. Um, that's amazing. Wait, you yes. posted something. She has a virtual dance class, like an online live stream thing. Yeah, she has there? a dance class and her teacher's doing a class every day at two o'clock. She goes on, does it. We've That's got um, we've got communal tennis courts right by where we live that we've been going to and I don't know, just chill. That's awesome. It must be nice to actually get to spend some time with your family, eh? Yeah. Did you say A? Yes. You I've been in Canada for long enough, Stephen. It's it's been in my vocabulary for so long. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hey. Um, tell me for a second about, uh, Big Slick. Yeah, yes. Um, I can talk all day about Big Slick. So as you probably know, there's a lot of incredible, incredible creative talents from Kansas City. Yep. From Will Forte to Paul Rudd, Derek Stone Street, Rob Riggle, yep. David Koechner, all those guys. And about, I guess, 11 years ago now, they started a small poker game as a charity event for the children's hospital there, which operates a lot like St. Jude. It's called Children's Mercy and that they don't charge people if they can't afford to pay for the health care. They just make sure the kids are taken care of no matter what it takes, which it's amazing because it's a local, locally sprouted, locally run mm -hmm. hospital. Um, and this poker game has now turned into a weekend long fundraising event that we play a softball game in the baseball stadium and we go play with the kids in the hospital. We have a bowling tournament and then it all ends at a big variety show at the end of the weekend. And last year was their 10th year of doing yep. it. And the variety show had moved from a small theater in t downtown Kansas city to the 5,000 seat sprint center. Yep. And we raised uh, $2.5 million in two days. Good for them. And over the course of 10 years, they've raised over $10 million for this children's hospital. Yeah. One of the, it's amazing what they did. One of the first things that I thought of uh, when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl this year was that I was happy because I knew how guys like Stone Street and Paul Rudd and just, just Kansas City. Yeah. Like big time. Yeah. Uh, they invited me one year and I, they invited me two different years. And I couldn't go. And, and uh, but I went to a con in Kansas City in, I want to say 2016 or 17. Have you ever met Casey Supergirl? No. Well, you should. I Next think time I you go, 
when I Big will. Slip comes back, she'll be there for sure. She's the girl that looks like Supergirl that's dressed as Casey Supergirl. That's amazing. And she's a wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful person that I met when I was at that con. That's awesome. You know, I've been to a lot of Comic Cons, but I've never <laughs> been to the Kansas City one. It's fantastic. I, so, funny, funny story. I committed to the KC Comic Con back in, oh gosh, I can't remember what season it was. I'm going to say five or six. And they scheduled us for uh, Paley Fest. Hmm. But they didn't schedule us for Paley Fest until like a month before it was going to happen. And I had committed to Kansas City Comic Con four months in advance for Saturday and Sunday, except that our panel was Saturday and it was all of us. It was the entire cast of every show that was on the air at the time. Oh my God. And I was like, guys, what, what do you, like, what do you want from me? Like, I, I, I've, I've committed to this. this. This promoter has sold a lot of tickets based on the fact that I'm coming here. And Greg Galanti goes, look, you don't have to go, but you will be the only person not there. <laughs> Oh shit. Okay. So I went to that con. I went to the, excuse me. I went to that Paley Fest. I went to the dinner thereafter. And then I red eyed to Kansas city was at the con from nine o'clock in the morning until four o'clock in the afternoon. And then was back in Vancouver that night. It was awesome. By the way, it was really, really good. Really, really good. Okay. Kansas City's some, great. Um... Did they at least feed you barbecue while you were there? I barely ate a sandwich when I was there. Okay, next time you're there, let know, me know. I know. And I'll you My good friend Jack and his wife Lauren and their kiddos, uh, I became good friends with them. And uh, they're constantly inviting me to Kansas City. And I'm pretty sure that they know the best part of the places. Um, oh, all right. I have to say hi. Do you, do you know Catherine Gallagher? She just commented, she hopped on here. She's one of my nearest and dearest, and I, she's super talented, and I love her so much. Hi, Do Catherine. I? I don't Do know. Do I know her? I don't know, I'm I asking you. So. Okay, well, you should, because she's awesome. Okay. Well, well, now I do. <laughs> there you go. All right, give me some, uh, give me some uh, movie recommendations. Ooh, okay, well, my top three are a, a, a nice spectrum of, among my favorite movies, because I can never pick a favorite movie, um, Gilda with Rita Hayworth from the 1930s, 30s, 40s, something like that. Okay. Um, Princess Bride. Mm-hmm. Usual Suspects. Jesus Christ. When did you first see The Princess Bride? I was probably 10. So and, four yeah. years ago, three years yeah, ago? Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, no, a uh, few <laughs> more years ago than that. Um, <laughs> no, but it's been one of my favorite movies for a long time. I saw it in the theater with my dad and my sister in 1987. Oh my God, that's awesome. Was it 1987? Sure. I'm pretty sure it was. Sounds right. Um, favorite characters? In order, Princess Bride. And by the way, this could destroy the internet if you don't, if you get this wrong. Favorite based on what, though? Based on entertainment level or based on? You... It's the game of Survivor. Oh, God. Okay. okay and, well... you, and you just got to take, you eventually got to take one person. So you can count it down from five, or you can go up from five, whatever you want. But oh, again, wow. as you're thinking about this, I went to a dinner in Phoenix in 2014, and I was watching game two of the Stanley Cup finals with the Kings and the New York Rangers, because I had been at Phoenix Comic Con, so I couldn't go to the game. My wife was at the game. Kings won in double overtime, and I ended up late to this dinner after Phoenix Comic-Con and Carrie Elways was there. I love Carrie. He played my dad in the movie. Well, I did not know that. 
but he's such a lovely, lovely man. And we went around the table telling stories and everyone was telling like a story. Bruce Campbell was hosting the dinner, <laughs> name dropping like a dink right now. And, but just in general, like everyone was telling their story and it came around to me and I went, hey man, can you tell me one Andre the Giant story from Princess Bride? <laughs> Even though I loved him in so many movies, I wanted to know what Andre the Giant. But anyway, go ahead. Give me, you don't have to pick your top five, pick five. Okay. First of all, have you read Carrie's book? Of course I have. He gave me a copy. Okay, okay good. Just check in because it's fabulous. Um, well, obviously. What's it, by the way, Wesley. what's it called? For, what's it called? for people just as you wish carrie wrote a book for those of you who don't know carrie wrote a book about his experience making the princess bride and called it as you wish because what else would he call the book mm -hmm. um okay favorite characters uh wesley obviously mm -hmm. indigo montoya um those are probably my top two i mean robin wright is just fantastic in everything she does three Andre the Giant, because I just want to give him a big old hug. And uh, I'm forgetting the name, but the, the, oh, Billy Crystal. Miracle Max? Yes. Okay. Clearly I need to refresh the movie. What's your, what's your five? Well, Vincent. It's way up at the top. The guy who orchestrates the plan? Oh, out. yeah. I was going to say him, but then I was like, oh, but Miracle Max, though. Um, I like whoever it was that played the minister. Mowage. Mowage. <laughs> Mowage is what brings us to Gaba to die. <laughs> um... By the way, that GIF is what I send to just any wedding-related group chat, whether it's somebody got engaged or somebody's getting mm -hmm. married or it's somebody's anniversary. That's always mm -hmm. my go-to GIF. Um, I don't know the name of the guy that runs the pit of despair. <laughs> I'm a big fan of him. I love that movie so much. We almost watched it last night. Oh, has Mavi seen it before? I watched it with her when she was two years old. My wife is not happy with me <laughs> because he turns the machine to 50. And yeah. Yeah, I remember when I first saw the movie, that was a little scarring. Yeah. But, you know. That's what happens when you're born in the late 90s. Um, okay. um, thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. Um, you have a wine with us. I do have a wine, and it's right here. Oh. Look at this. Yeah. I have Queens and Angels. Mm. And actually, I'm doing a, a video for a certain media outlet um, that's going to be up at some point for you know, social distancing and all that. And mm -hmm. I have to make a cocktail of what's in my kitchen. So thank goodness I have this. Um, have we told you what Knocking Point is doing? Um, in terms of, uh, we're, we're trying to, you've never been to Walla Walla? No. Right. Walla Walla is where we're based. It's a very small town. And we're trying as long as we possibly can to stay open. We've got one employee going in a day, uh, packing boxes, all that stuff. And we're also trying to support local businesses. Mm -hmm. So we've taken off any money on shipping. If you want Cat's Wine, it's at knockingpoint.com. Um, it's going into the Walla Walla community and it's helping us keep people that otherwise are gonna be really affected through this process to be employed. That's amazing. It's not bad. Well, you know what? It takes every single one of us and every person doing what little they can to try and just 
be a part of a community because all of yep. us are, you know, I mean, look, I'm here in my house by myself. With great so, lighting uh, any, in front of any, a window. Do I need to go in front of a window next time? I mean, generally, that's where you <laughs> get light. But, you know, it's, it's kind of been amazing to see all these things that people are doing. Yep. Like, you're doing this every day. And Josh Gad's reading a story on his Twitter live every day. And oh, is he really? Yeah, cool. he reads a storybook every day that he like he's reading to his kids, but he's also reading to Twitter. Um, but you know, people are doing these little things every day to try and keep morale up and keep spirits up, and uh, it's it's amazing to see. Yeah. What's on your mug? Uh, it's a it's a pun. It says my puns are koala tea. I'm I'm having coffee and I'm. Popped a little Bailey's in there because it's Friday. Absolutely. And I already did my morning swim, so I'm good. I'm in good oh, shape. Oh, perfect. Yeah. You're good to go. Hey, um, not that the uh, entire uh, world needs to hear it, but uh, you were an absolute joy to work with. You really were. Thank you. Back at you. Yeah. Let's do it again sometime. Okay. Bye, Kat. Bye. Give your family my love. I will. And yours. Bye. She's delightful. I loved working with Kat. And we got so caught up in the final season of the show and all the stuff that was going on. And even when she was on the show in season seven, but I didn't get a chance to work with her. She's really, really lovely and is going to have a wonderful and successful career both on and off the screen. So uh, there we go. That was fun. I'll be back tomorrow with who? Who's to say, really? But uh, I love you guys, and thank you for tuning in.